All right, so today what we're going to talk about a little bit here is Newton's first law. So Newton actually has three laws, uh, but today we're just going to talk mainly about the, uh, the first law. And so Newton's first law basically says that an object that's in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force. All right, so forces are causing changes in motion. So basically an external force acting upon an object will cause it to change its motion somehow. So imagine you had, say, an object here traveling in a straight line at 10 meters per second. That object is going to continue to travel at 10 meters per second at a constant velocity until an external force acts upon that object. All right, so mathematically speaking, the sum of all the forces, so basically the sum of all the forces, so the force, basically the net force, which is the sum of all the forces, if that equals zero, then the acceleration will also equal zero. So there's gonna be no acceleration here. So if you have a net force equaling zero, then the acceleration is zero. The object stays in motion if there's no net force acting on that object. Okay, so when we're, when we're trying to figure out what is this net force? What is this sum of all the forces? Now, to figure that out, it's, it's dependent on each type of question that you're asked. So in a couple examples that I wrote down here, it says find the net force of the following. So we wanna figure out what that net force is. All right, and if, if that net force is zero, then the acceleration of that object will also be zero, all right? And that's a state of what's called dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so I'll write that down, dynamic equilibrium. And that means that if this object is moving and it has a net force of zero, then it's not gonna be accelerating and it's gonna have an acceleration of zero and it's gonna be at a state of dynamic equilibrium. All right, so on these questions here, it says find the net force on the following. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw something called a free body diagram. And so a free body diagram will be a picture of the net force or the forces or all the different forces acting on any given object at a given time. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out this net force by using this free body diagram. You may see that abbreviated FB. So free body diagram, and it's really important with any question involving Newton's laws that you draw this free body diagram. So let's take our object here, and we have a couple forces. We have an applied force and a friction force. So the applied force here, it says, is 20 Newtons east. And so <clears throat> basically that's going to go this way at 20 Newtons. We then have a frictional force of 15 Newtons west, so it's going this way. All right, and so if you have a, an applied force of 20 Newtons and a frictional force of 15 Newtons, well, to figure out the net force, what you have to do is you write out basically the force net, and we know the net force would be the sum of all the forces. So we have here, we have a, well, these are all vectors, so you should include an arrow over top. We have the force applied, so I'll just call that FA, plus the force of friction, which we'll call FF. And so here, while well, we know that the net force is going to equal the force applied, which is positive 20 newtons, plus, and then the frictional force will be negative 15 newtons. So negative 15 newtons. And so notice I included that as a negative because by our convention, anything that's going in this direction will be positive and anything going the other direction will be negative. Okay, so plus a negative 15 newtons. And if you do that calculation, you get F net is equal to five newtons and that's a positive five newtons. So we know that that's going to the right or east. So it would be positive five newtons east and that's gonna be your net force acting on that that object. So because this has a net force, it will be accelerating or undergoing an acceleration. 
So this particular example, that will not be a case of dynamic equilibrium, all right, because you have some net force. All right, second example, it says a box is pushed at a constant velocity along a horizontal surface. So here, well, we know we have a box and we have some sort of force applied. And so here I'm actually doing a free body diagram. And so we have an applied force there and going in the opposite direction, we're gonna have some other force because we know that this is going at a constant velocity. So if it's at a constant velocity, then we know the total net force has to be zero because there's no acceleration and the velocity is constant. All right, so this would be a case of dynamic equilibrium. And so the box is pushed at a constant velocity along a horizontal surface. So that's your applied force. That's your frictional force. If we were to come up with a mathematical equation to represent this, we would say, well, F net is equal to the force applied plus the force of friction but we know that because it's pushed at a constant velocity, it is a case of dynamic equilibrium. And if it's a case of dynamic equilibrium, then the net force is equal to zero. So here we know that the net force is zero because it's at a state of constant velocity. Next question, a skydiver falls from the sky. If we neglect air resistance, then we have our skydiver here falling from the sky. So we have force of gravity acting on that skydiver. And there's no upward force because we're neglecting any air resistance. So it's just the force of gravity going down. And so your net force here will equal the force of gravity and that's it. So whatever your net force is, that'll equal just the force of gravity. So if we could calculate the force of gravity, then that will give us the net force. Okay, the next question says, a skydiver falls from the sky with air resistance. So this time you have the force of gravity going down and going up, you have the force, I'll say, R, resistance. Okay, so we have force gravity going down and the force resistance going up. And so here your net force is equal to the force of gravity plus the force resistance. And so in this case here, the most likely when you do this calculation, if it gave you any values for the resistive force, so let's say it did, let's say my force of gravity was 20 newtons and my resistive force was five newtons. The way you would do this calculation is you would say force net is equal to 20 newtons plus the resistive force. Now notice that's going in the opposite direction. So we're gonna put minus, make sure you include the negative, so minus five newtons. And so if you do that calculation, you get 15 newtons. So the net force would be 15 newtons. Okay, and the last question here is a wagon is pulled at a along a horizontal surface at an angle of 50 degrees, or sorry, 30 degrees with a force of 18 newtons. Now this last part got cut off, it says neglect friction. Okay, so a wagon is pulled along a horizontal surface. So again, we're gonna draw our free body diagram. So here's our wagon. And we want to draw it like this. So that's an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, and along a horizontal surface with a force of 18 newtons. Now there's no force going in the opposite direction because we're neglecting friction. Okay, there's no frictional force going there. All right, we also have a downward force of gravity because anything that's on earth basically has a gravitational force acting on it. Well, if we have a force of gravity going down, we also have another force going up, which is the normal force. All right, and the normal force, that's the type of force that's always perpendicular to a surface. So the force normal is perpendicular to the surface. All right, so here I have, I have the ground and we have the gravity going down and then therefore we have the normal force going directly up which is perpendicular to that surface, okay? And if you remember anything from kinematics, it's very important that you separate your X and Y components. So here we have the force applied in the X and then going upward like this, you have the force applied in the Y direction.
and that's if you use x and y like this. Okay, so now when you're calculating the net force, well, you have to actually calculate net force in the x and the net force in the y, because they're going to be two separate things. You can't combine them together. So the force net in the x, well, that's going to be the force applied in the x. Now notice there's no force of friction in this example, so we basically that's all you have is your net force is going to be your force applied in the x, and then your net force in the y is going to be, well, we have a normal force going up, and we have an applied force going up, and we have the force of gravity going down. So you're going to have, for the force net in the y, you're going to have force applied in the y plus the force normal plus force of gravity. So in the y, you have three, three components here. You have the force applied in the y, the normal force in the y, and the force gravity in the y. We don't include this 18 newtons because that's not in the x or the y. That's why we split this up into each component, the x and y component. So if I were to go on to calculate this, well, the force applied in the x, well, that's just using basic trigonometry because this is a right angle triangle here. Well, it's going to be 18 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, if you're unsure how to do that, make sure you review your trigonometry. And so here you get a value for the force net in the x. And then in the y, your force net in the y will equal all well, the force applied in the y, which will be 18 times the sine of 30, plus the force normal, which is this force here, so we'll leave that as just Fn at the moment, plus the force of gravity, and that one's going down. So you can calculate the force of gravity using different methods and using Newton's second law. But today we're just gonna say that that's plus force gravity. So that's how we would get the force net in the y, and this is how you would get the force net in the X.